Hello and welcome to this new series of videos. Hereafter, we're going to talk about overset meshes. So we're going to work a little bit in open film, but also we're going to show it, show you how to do it in using Fluent. So what are over mesh, overset meshes? So let, let, let me show you a few, a few figures. So it's, it's a small presentation. So to explain to you where, what, what we're dealing with. So basically we're set meshes. What we do is just overlap meshes. So put one mesh over the other. So here we have this example, the classical cylinder that we have done a lot. So imagine that you get component mesh one, then two and three. Okay. So we have all these three meshes. Then we put it all over the other one. And then we have an overset mesh. Okay, so the background mesh, this is, let's say the quarter, the quarter one. Then we have the component mesh two, which is the one that we are refining sound that we want to capture better some features there. And then we have the mesh around the body. Okay, so the beauty about this method is that you can add as many bodies as you want. You can have a retired motion, very large display. This since that you can do very easily using mesh morphing for instance. So in open front, you can use 12 or no loss. You can use any cell type that is supported by this older by open front. Also, you can work in 2D and 3D. This example that we're going to do is a uh, 2D mesh. Okay. And also you can use any mesh utility. The ones that come with open front, let's say a snappy block mesh or CF mesh, or you can use any search party library, external libraries. For instance, you can generate your meshes using uh, Fluent if you have it, or you can use it, generate them using point ones or GMesh or whatever you want. So this is the basic idea in our set meshes to assemble the whole set. So here, first we assemble, we create, we create the meshes individually, and then you assemble everything. So the next step, is we start to, to set up the simulation. So there is an additional step that we need to create different sounds. Okay, we need to identify those meshes. Okay, so we see this figure here. So in light blue, we have zone 80, then in this dark blue, we have zone 81, and yellow, we have zone 82. So basically, what we do here is to assign this this identification so the measure the solver knows where is where, where are the priorities in the meshes and do the interpolation. So usually it's a good practice to put Sony ID0 the background one. The background mesh will be the one that is not moving or the one that it does does not have any any overset patches. We're going to see what are those now. So after you assign those, you need to do it using for instance an open phone set set fills. Then there is an, another additional step which you need to do, but it's done automatically by, 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 by the solver, but up to some point you need to assign. So when you create the boundary conditions or when you are creating the meshes, you need to create, let's say, this interpolation fringe. See here? So the inter interpolation fringe are the patches where we're going to interpolate the mesh, so the, the solution. So remember that when we created the mesh, we have these patches here and this patch here. Okay, these patches, we need to assign and say that is an overset patch. We're going to see later what are those overset patches. Okay. So these are created by the user, but later there are some other patches, interpolation cells that are created automatically by the solver. So we see here we are going to have whole cells, interpolated cells and calculated cells. So the whole cells are created automatically by the solver, then interpolated cells. The ones that are close to walls are created by solver. The one that we used to interpolate from mesh to mesh, those are user given, you need to create it, and calculated cells, all the domain. So we're going to define these calculated cells, or the solver define these calculated cells, and the solution is computed from one mesh to the other. One thing is that these calculated cells can have, can serve as donor receptors. Okay, I'm not going to go into theory about one or detail, but donors are cells that I'm going to give for, information to another mesh and receptors are the ones that are receiving information from, from another mesh. So as you see here, we have three meshes. So there will be a few donors and receptors in our say topology. So after everything is done, outside of the sun, we define those patches and what we need, the others are computed automatically by the solver. We have 
our our overset mesh and so on. So let's take a look at this figure. So here, the three the three levels in Warframe uh, visualization. So look at that. We have this on here. The, the one remember interpolation frame. The one that we create. Then we have this one, which is in the component mesh tree. Okay, the cylinder. Also interpolation. The solution is interpolated from the other meshes to this one, but also this one would pass information to the others. And then you see the hold here. Okay. This hold belongs to the other two levels where we're going to see the other ones, but see that everything is the same. But so if we move here and then we put a contour plot now on the background mesh, see that the background mesh, we have this interpolation fringe, the interpolation cells are computing by the solver. And then you have the hold. So now here we're not computing the solution. The solution is coming here to background one, back, back, background mesh, okay, component mesh zero, one, whatever you give, one in this case. Then it's interpolated to the other. You keep going here, but it's still exchanging information with the other one, and then it goes to the other one, okay, and pass information. So this is the idea, okay, at this level, component mesh zero, no solution is computed here, and here there is an interpolation. Then we go to the other one. So we have component mesh zero, the background one contour, but also in, back, in component mesh one, the refinement area will also have the contour plot. And see that we have another hole here, okay? So see that there are difference. So you see there is a relation here in the cell size. So if you have large cell size, probably you can have this Operation zones will be closer for the, for those holes. So it's something that you need to control. And it's clear also that if you have large differences between uh, component level, component mesh levels, you will add some numerical diffusion. It will smear the solution. Okay. So maybe this case is not ideal because look at that. There is some, some, uh, difference between the, the, the levels, the cell levels. But this case is okay. Later we're going to see. But this is also that you need to have in mind that it's highly advisable to have same size, same cell size or anything in between different levels. So this, this case, this is ideal. See here, yeah, we have these cells in this around the cylinder body cell size. And then when you go to the refinement level here, you see that we have also approximately the same cell level, same cell size. So we are going to minimize the interpolation. So coming back to this case. So remember that the hole here and the interpolated source are computed again by the solver. The only thing that we define here is this one, okay? The overset patch, okay? And then we move to the other one. So we put everything in control visualizations, you know, okay? We see here that these two here are defined by the user and machine time, and then the rest, as we saw here, are computed by the solver. So this is the idea, okay? Some things needs to be by the user, some things are done by the solver automatically, and then every the solution is interpolated between meshes done by the solver. And then also you should be aware that you need to be close to interpolation series. You need to, to, to have similar solutions. So basically this is the idea behind overset meshes in any solver, okay, open phone and also in Fluent, it's the same idea. Probably there are some stuff that, that are different. Probably in Fluent are a little bit more efficient, efficient because they do some other stuff, but the idea is pretty much the same. So the steps are, remember, so look at that. They start from your meshes. Okay, you assemble your meshes. Everything done by the user. Then you create the zones. That's next to be by the user. You need to do it. We're going to do it in this tutorial, in this case. And then the stencils are computed, okay? And also we assign cell types. This is done by the other set solver, but also the patches, the interpolation patches between meshes, also you need to do it, okay? So there is an intervention here, user, but also the, the solver. Then the solution is computed in, in, in each component mesh, and also it is interpolated. Everything is done by the, by the solver. The only thing that you need to do here is that choosing interpolation method. So there are a few choices in, up, in open form, but also any software will give, will give you many actions and you will choose one. We're going to use one, the default one recommended by the developer, but have in mind that there are some other choices. We're going to see that. And then after you have the solution, you, you, you do the traditional post processing, which is a little bit more tedious than working with single meshes. 
because you, you have all these three labels, you need to filter some one, zero, three, and, uh, and choose what you, what you want to see. Sometimes level, let's say one, it overlaps with which level zero, you don't see anything, so you will need to translate it a little bit just to see that what we're going to see those, those, those issues later. So we're going to, to run this example. Okay, the classical, again, the flow about a cylinder. In this case, the cylinder is fixed, okay? So one thing that is important that you can use overset meshes for, for with fixed bodies, they're not moving, but personally speaking, it's not the best way, it's not a good idea to do because you are you, you are putting an, an, an extra a computational overhead just because this interpolation, okay, that you need to do, but you can get a solution. They are very good to use overset meshes when you have models that we're going to see later. So basically what we're going to do, okay, uh, we're going to run this case, okay? The overset mesh where we have this stretch background mesh. See that in this case, we run what we're going to do soon and see everything, but you would realize that the cells here have similar sizes, okay? In this case, we have a coarse uh, background mesh that the sizes are not similar. Well, we're going to see the difference in the solution because there are some errors in the interpolation. And then also you have the option to put three component meshes. Okay, in this case, you see you have three components meshes. So, and if you want to add another mesh, it's up to you, okay? So basically here we have the solution and we have a reference solution, which is a single body fit mesh, okay, fit mesh. So this is a solution with no overset meshes and see that we have it here, this one, okay? And you see that our reference solution, and then we have two other meshes. But we see that there is one that is kind of very uh, off from those values, which is the one, the uniform background mesh, this one. And you see this is the problem, that you are adding too much diffusion when you are doing the interpolation. Probably when computing that whole, also there is a problem because those servers are quiet. So you may have those uh, the, the the interpolation cells close to the very close to the walls, not enough space to interpolate solution. So these are things that you need to take into account. But you see that using this mesh and this one, we have a very good agreement with the others. Of course, there are differences because different meshes, the diffusion added by the interpolation, but everything is okay. We managed to capture very similar average values. Okay, even maximum and minimum from the leaf signal, and also a very good frequency, okay, very similar frequencies on a strong number we, we, we can capture. And this is what we have the three solutions. So this is the two component meshes, okay, no stretching in the background. So this is the one that is having some diffusion under predicting the value, but you see that actors the, the way very well, but kind of is you compare with the other two cases, you will see that. It's not very well resolved with the wake, but also so we soon in there are some problems called close to the walls. This is the one with the stretching, a very good solution. And then we have the one with the the with the mesh refinements on with the three component meshes. And there is also interesting here that it was to, to, to point out. Look at here that you have the these errors in the interpolation. This is due to passing the solution from one mesh to the other. And also something very important that the overset patch here that we have here cannot overlap uh, a boundary condition, an outlet boundary condition in mean, one will give you problems. Okay, so be careful if you sit here, do not sit here exactly in the same position or close to this one because otherwise you will have some problems there. Okay, so that is the case that we're going to run is a fit case, but what else we can do with overset meshes? So we can deal moving be with moving bodies, and this is where they come in handy. This kind of measure. So see here that I was telling you at the beginning that you can use any kind of meshes. So here we have this mesh. Okay, X uh, cells. As you recognize this one. So in that was a snappy mesh. In this case, we have triangles and also quadrilaterals. And this mesh was done using uh, uh, ANSYS measure. Okay. No problem, we can import them, we can assemble it, everything. And here we have the solution, very nice solutions, okay? Then we can go into more difficult cases with large 
uh, displacements and re rebody motion. So look at here that if you try to do this one with a single mesh, okay, it will be really tricky, probably really fast. You will have too much uh, large deformation, low quality, and will diverge. Instead, you put the overload set meshes, and basically you have no restrictions. <laughs> So some final comments in our set meshes. Uh, one of the things that remember that they're very handy with the, when you're dealing with moving bodies, large displacements, and really body motion with multiple pulses, body stuff like that. So if you try to do something like this using uh, single meshes or non-overlapping meshes, permaces will be really difficult, if not impossible. Here also this is vortex with induced vibration. We don't see a solution, but this is cylinder so isolated according to the wave and everything. And as you see, you try also since you try to do this by using a single mesh more a mesh morphing will be a little bit tricky. Again, also a falling body here, you don't see the water surface, maybe you recognize this simulation, but you see that using overset meshes, we have basically no restriction, so we can drop this body for for any height. This is a very nice case. You have an overtaking car, so the classical hammer body, hammer body. And see here that you put it, you overtake this one. Okay, you, you pass this car, and there is no problem in what you do. Okay, there is no limitation. So as you try to do this using um, mesh morphing or layer insertion or relative motion or more stuff like that, it will be very difficult. This is where uh, overset meshes. And yeah, it really works to use. So let's go to work and so on. So, the tutorial that we are going to do, you can in the video description, you will see a link, you can download it. It's really fast. Okay. And let's see what we do. So, here I'm running my computer. So, use a virtual machine. So, let's go to the stretch, stretch mesh. Okay. So I have several solutions here, but just, and look at here that we have the director structure. So the different, uh, one thing that I want just to remind you when you see this is great, it's just to run automatically the case. So you will have run solver, only the solver. So previously you will need the mesh and then run out will run everything. Then we have here the solutions that we have in, in the slides. You have here small description what to do. And you will see that we have two folders. So remember that we need to assemble those meshes, create those meshes. So for each mesh that you have, you will need to create a mesh and that, and then that mesh is merged with the other one. Okay. So as you look at this file, you will see the steps. So we go into cylinder, we use block mesh. Okay. We create the mesh, single mesh. Okay. And then we go into all folder. We create another mesh, which would be the background mesh. And then we're going to merge the cylinder into the background mesh. Okay, this is this is step. Okay, when we do that, we are going to create regions, okay? That is, those regions will be created here in this, when we run check mesh, we're going to see. So as we have those regions, we can do the initialization using Sigfo. So we have some the regions that have, they have a name, we can initialize that, and then we can run. Okay, to run that one, we're going to, First, we need to initialize another initialization. So the one we have here for sums, the one that we have here is just to perturbate the velocity. Something very important that is highly recommended to do this initializations in different files. Okay, we have found that it may happen that sometimes you can have some problems. So initialize sums individually, and then you can initialize whatever you want in another file. And then you run your solver, okay? Here, it's a very different solver. It's over pimple in phone. So every time you see over here in your solver, you know that it's a solver to deal with uh, overset meshes. So most of the physics is already implemented. So you will have you have solvers for compressible uh, flows, incompressible flows, for multi-phase flows, uh, not a basic physics. So most of the solvers, the most important ones, you you, you have it already implemented. And also I want to remind you that this solver is only by available with the open phone version, the one from AC, okay? The one that you can get in openphone.com. So I will run here. So usually I will load the environment variables. So here I have 1812, the latest one. I highly recommend you to use the latest one. 
And now we can start to run. So if you type over, you will see that all the solvers that you, you, you have here, just over and tap now, and you see that you have simple phone, drop pimple phone, pimple dim phone, inter dim phone, okay, potential phone, operation phone. Okay, so you, you have most of the physics covered by, by, by the overset solver. So let's run this case step by step. Okay, so remember, let's go to cylinder. Here we generate the mesh. So you go block mesh, you have the mesh. Nothing else you need to do here. Okay, so we're going to visualize, but open the block mesh dictionary. Okay, so we open Python and simple. This is what we have. Okay, our very nice match. But remember that here we have two patches. We have the wall and this one. This is the, the overset patch, the one that the user needs to do. And if you look at your dictionary, see here that we're creating that patch. Okay, overset patch. This is a new kind of patch that it is in the, for overset patches. Okay, you put it here, you have those faces, we have the walls, the cylinder, and then we have the empty faces. Uh, something important, uh, if you have many meshes that you are going to overlap and they share common names, common faces, use the same names because when you merge, they are going to be, to, to be grouped in the same patch. So in the background mesh, we are going, we are also going to have back and front. So if I give you the same name, they are going to be grouped together. Okay. Be careful with that. The same applies for the overset patch. The overset patch needs to be a single patch. So you, we're calling that one here overset patch and the other one overset patch and they're going to be grouped together with what we have in the background mesh or whatever mesh we, we have. The same applies if you convert the mesh for another sensor. Okay, nothing new here. So we can close here. Okay, now we go to the other folder, all, okay, and here, okay, we are going to merge the other mesh into this one. Okay. So let me go here a little bit. So the first step, remember block mesh, generate this mesh, traditional dictionary. So you open the word recognizes, recognize this one, nothing new. So everything parameter, parameterized using uh, the call, this one function line computations and when you create the overset the, the mesh you give the name so see that we're giving the same name so whatever we have in the other is going to be grouped into this one okay then we have a new one top bottom whatever and see that at the beginning we have this one so here we're creating an empty patch okay so the background mesh remember we don't have any any overset patch here but we create this one empty and the information coming from the cylinder is going to be put here. So when we have the final mesh, and this is an important detail, this patch, the overset patch, will be the first one in our boundary list. We're going to show you some, uh, that, that file when we do the merge, but this is not compulsory because it's recommended that it's a good idea to have this, pa this patch, the first one in your list. If you have it in another position, there is no problem. Open phone, uh, open phone will come, will give you a small warning, but we have found that it's a good idea to have this one. It's recommended by the, by the developers. And you will see that sometimes you will see some differences in computing time that is faster as you, you, you follow this small rule. So let's merge the mesh. So we take this cylinder. Okay. Put it there. We merge that one. You see that everything has been merged. So as you look in constant now, open boundary, you see that this is the first patch. This is what I was telling you. Overset patch needs to be the first one in your list. If you have it in a, somewhere else, it's not a good idea. Open phone will give you a warning and maybe it will be slower, but, uh, but it's not a problem. You can run. But try to, to, to follow this advice. So now we have this file. We can do the next step, check mesh. And this is an important one because we check the quality, but also when we run check mesh, it will also automatically create some sex. Okay. Because we have regions here and I see that we have region zero and region one. Okay. These are sex that already exist. 
Okay, and these sets we're going to use to do the initialization. Okay, so look at that. Let's open Paraffin. Okay, so at this point, see that you have everything assembled. Okay, the two meshes, and you can access the sets here. Okay, so let's see the sets. So nothing, and you select cell set region zero, and you see that it's the background mesh. And then region one. Okay, so this is important. Okay, you need after you do that, the mesh meshes, run check mesh, check mesh will give you quality everything and also will create these regions automatically. If you don't do it, you can do it also with stop set. But I prefer to do it using check mesh, it's done automatic, automatically for you. Sometimes it might fail when you have very many bodies, you have found that one, but usually you will get into the into this case. Okay, so now that we have this, we can go so the typical initialization. Okay, so we'll do this, and now we run sex fields. Okay, sex fields. The first one is just to initialize those zones, the zones ID. Okay, so as you open now system, you go this one. See that everything initially is zero. Okay. And then we go region by region. So see that we select uh, cell to cell, this function. We set region zero. This is the set that we're going to select. We know that it's a good ground. We visualize that in Paraphone. Okay, if you don't know which one is, you just open Paraphone and access that information. This one have sun ID zero. Remember, you select the one that is not moving or the one that does not have any word set patch set by the user is the one that you're going you want to give the, the ID zero. And then the other one, you give the ID one. You have more cells, just give only two, three, four, whatever. Usually it's an inter it's an integer coming from zero, zero, one, two, three. So at this point, if we launch again, Paraphone, we're going to see that we have now new information that we can access here, okay? As you come here, you so that it's an ID, you will see that you have zero and one. This is what the soul will, will, will look for to then create the cell types and everything. Okay, so next step, I'm going to show you there is a new uh, scalar field that uh, the solver will create where you have the information of cell, cell type. So at this point, we're ready to run. Okay, so we run the usual way. All the post processing, everything works in the usual way. So let's take a look here. So we initialize, okay? This is just to perturbate the velocity. So you see this is a velocity perturbation just to, to unset the von Karman street. Okay, so nothing strange here. And then we run in parallel, we run in the usual way. Pulse bar. Okay, there are some warnings here or some additional information. I'm going to show you what, what is those probably in a later video. Okay, we do the renumber mesh, so that's a good practice. And then we're ready to run, okay? Send it to background and see that it's running, okay? So let's go to the beginning of so our log file here, okay? So I see that we're running the case, okay? We'll give you some information. Okay, you're using this library, whatever, and then all the functions are, but see here that now you have this extra information. This is the one related to the uh, interpolation. So we're using this interpolation method, the sum detected, and you have this many calculated cells, this many interpolated cells, and this many whole cells. And that's all. Okay. So there are some a few things that you need to take into account into, in the numerics. So as you go, for instance, control dictionary, as a scheme. Later, in another video, we are going to go into details here. So this is just the practical stuff. The first thing is that in the content dictionary, you need to use this library to enable do not forget that. Then you can add some debug switches specifically related to our set. So it will give you more information. It will save many more things. Later, you can play with those. And nothing new here, okay? Then in SP scheme, Useful, we have a very accurate method here. I won't go into details, but the new entry that you will find here is the overset interpolation. Okay, 
So see here that you have a few methods implemented in Alban from we're going to use this method. Okay, or oh, inverse distance. And then we have some extra entries here that I'm not going to go into details, probably in a later video. But it's just to use different interpolation, like implicit or explicit interpolation. Okay, just to speed up things. And as you go into SV solution, you have this entry. You need to always put this entry, even if the meshes are not moving, it's just required by the solver. The rest is the standard. And then you will have some additional entries regarding the overset uh, solver. So the specific one is this. Okay. So this one is just, you, you, by default, it's off, leave it off. You just will put it through if you have a closed domain with overset meshes. Uh, then also this correct fee, by default in the standard solvers, this is on, but with overset meshes is off. Okay, I highly recommend you to put it off. Don't put it on because it will give you problems. Then it's also recommended to add a little bit more correction when you do all the submissions to get better accuracy. You have this enter uh, entry here. It's also just to, to the time to do some correction. If the bodies are moving just to uh, control things that the cells don't change too much when you are doing that interpolation. And the rest is a standard, okay? Also in constant, you need to have always the dynamic mesh dictionary. So see here, when you open this one, you always need to define this one. And in this case, this is standard definition, easy body is not moving. Later when we do a moving body, you see that we're going to use always this library, but then you can implement the different motions or whatever you want, really well, motion, because motion, whatever you, you, you need to use, okay? Well, but this is standard, is your body is not moving. And that's all when setting the case, okay? As you see, it's running. Let's wait a little bit when it's over. And then we're going to come back to the solution, okay? So we're going to look at the new field that was created and see a fast visualization. Okay, we're back. Solution is over. You will see 150 times, probably is one you can control, uh, verify the solution. You can run also the dissolver using a single mesh. You will see that this one is a little bit more, more time, time consuming, but we'll see that the results are quite similar. So now we're ready to see our solution. Okay. So we run, we run in parallel, mechanism run in parallel. It's up to you. You run a single processor, processor. You just launch Parafum, but in my case, as we run in parallel, Parafum build end. Okay. We select here the compose solution, apply, and this is what we have. Okay, and see that you have all those solutions that are interpolated. Okay, so we are going to do some manipulation in a later video. Okay, how to do the post position. I still told you it's a little bit more uh, tedious because you, you need to filter holes, interpolation areas, put one one forward to see a solution but in any case we, we, we get the idea so let's go to the last one and see velocity okay and see here that you put the measure see here that there is kind of you see a difference between the solution this is due to the interpolation okay and as you can imagine you can guess you have fine measures are very good, they are matching, they have similar aspect ratios, and then it shows that interpolation will be minimized. Also, different interpolations method might give you different solutions. It's here you have the whole. You will see that maybe there is some solution here, but this is just because we're visualizing all the, the interpolators. But here, everything is blocked here. You are, we're not computing the solution. And you see that here, it's an idea. So, Okay, so you we only have uh, okay. We see that in cell types. Okay, this is a new field that we have. As you put cell types here, you will see zero. Remember, it's calculated. Then you have one the interpolated area, and then you have two the block cells. Okay, but remember that here we have two meshes. Okay, so we need to do some kind of filtering to see that one. You see here that we have one single patch. So let's do that fast. So we put here on the size there. Apply. We have it there. Okay. Let me see cell types. But you see that 
we don't see very well that. So what we need is just use a threshold filter, okay, to extract to separate some zero zero one and and then this one one you shift it a little bit in front of the other one. So let's do that. So we use threshold here. So that this one, so like this, just reset the filter, and we want to extract some zero, okay. So we'll see here that we only have that sun here. And they see that this is very different from the other one. See that this is the hole that is computed using the other mesh. Solution is not computed here, it's interpolated here. And then we have another mesh. Let's apply another filter. We want to see mesh one. You have it there. Good, so tight. Okay, well, the so valid. See that is over the. Uh, so value over the other one. So just to see that one, we can just shift it a little bit in front of the other one. So you have here the transformation. Okay. And just put it 0 0.5. Okay. I see that now we have it in front of the other one. Okay. So here. And this is what we have. So this is the peculiar thing about doing the post -process. So It can be a little much, much complicated even when you go in 3D. 3D, you will see that there are many steps, extra step, but this is what we have. So see that let me go wire from here and see what is happening here. So see that calculate the solution, then the whole remember this, all of this was automatically computed by the solver. So you have a wall here and it's automatically computed. Then solution interpolated there, everything is blocked, no solution. You pass the solution to this one and you do your job. Okay. So that you see here, okay, in our solution. So this is what is happening. So let me put surface. So as you see, it's very powerful method. There are, it has its kinks on it and goes to interpolation, but if you follow good standard practice, you will see that you won't have any, any problem. So this is it, this is how you run. Uh, overset simulation, a simple case, but what we thought here, you can do it with, with any geometry. So, uh, the last, last thing that I want to show you is just a comparison. It's a previous case. So in your folder, you will see that you have this folder here now and you download it. This, you have previous solutions that I run. So let's see what we have with this new plot. Okay. So. This is basically the results. Uh, uh, Here's the, the PowerPoint size. So see that, let me hide this, this. And we have this one. So we have the body fitted mesh, okay? And then we can, com we can compare with the overset mesh. So see that there is some dif difference, but maybe the, uh, the mean values are very similar, but there are some difference in the amplitude, but everything is due to the mesh, okay? Probably if you improve a little bit more the overset mesh, you will get something similar, but in testing also we get similar frequencies. Then we compare, this is the stretch mesh, okay? Remember the one that we just run, that we use the stretching close to the to the body. Okay, so where was this case? Over here. Okay, so when we add that stretching, we match the cells and we improve the solution. In the other case, in the one that we didn't add this stretching, we have large, uh, so something like that. Okay, we have a large difference, which is this one. As you see, it's very, very different. Okay, and then in the case that we added with that refinement area, see that we have again a good agreement. Okay, so we are happy. Okay, so I have the other solution as well. So let me show you. The solution quartz mesh. Okay, so I have it always in all. But I found. So the problem with this mesh is this. You see that it's almost it's too derated between this one, this one, this one. So there is a lot of air, inter, uh, diffusion and uh, interpolation errors introduced all around this overset patch. And when we go to the other case. Okay, so we have three component meshes, the other one. So see, it, it, we work in the same way. We have 
a folder for each individual mesh, and then we follow all those steps. Merge from, let's say, I will merge from refinement sound to all. Then after I have that system, I will merge from cylinder to all to the other one that was already merged. Okay, so you keep going in that way. So usually a practice that, that I do is that I call the folder where I'm going to put, put all my mesh, I call it all, and then from the other folders, I start to, to merge everything. Okay, so if I go to all, open this one, and this is what we have, three component meshes, as you see here, okay. So this one match well here, this one, okay. But however, here there will be some problems later. We do some other post processes. Post processing the next video. You see that here there is some diffusion. You have we have the phone camera strip, but here there will be some diffusion. And also here in the boundary so probably we can see that we you know that we have a solution already. Oh, okay. Let me false case. Okay. And see here that the problems are well studying. You so see that here, kind of, there is some diffusion due to the change in cell sizes. But also here, there is there are some problems when changing from one to the other. And again, uh, the bigger base is that don't put this close to this one. So probably also this is not a good idea. Okay, it might give you some problems. And then the post processing is the same way. Remember, you are going to use thresholds and separate everything. So that will be part of the next video. How to set up three component meshes or more. Okay. And then doing the post processing and a few details and the numerics that I will show you. Okay. So I hope you found this video useful and see you next time. Thank you very much for, for following us. Bye.